Herpetologist Tom Tining has been monitoring an elusive snake in a not so expected place, Springfield, Massachusetts. So here we are in a relatively urban, in fact a very urban location looking for snakes, which is not what typically most people think to do. Uh, we're at an intersection here, we've got housing developments here, but a little piece of conservation land has been left behind, and that's what I'm hoping we will see one of the uh, neatest and one of the rarest snakes in the Northeast, a small little worm snake. So we're going to head down the road and take a peek into the forest and see what we can find. Since we know very little about these animals, it uh, is difficult to find them. We do have to look actually fairly carefully because they're very, very uh, cryptic. And there's a lot of uh, fallen logs in here, and this is good, and bark. So we'll just keep on checking. And we'll try these. Our famous earthworms. And we'll try these. We get to see a lot of little things looking for worm snakes. Oh, a little garter snake. They're found virtually every habitat you can imagine. Garter snakes, which eat lots of things. Earthworms, redbacks, just what we've been saying with the worm snakes. Lots of insects, big ones will eat small mammals, small birds. They have a really generalized um, habitat. This baby garter snake is the size of an adult worm snake. This is how big these worm snakes ever get. So we'll continue our search. We have uh, what for all intents and purposes is a small patch of uh, wilderness. Uh, unkempt, a lot of native species. A few exotic species are in here as well, but it is a little oasis for uh, wildlife like the red-bellied woodpecker that's calling, lots of stuff that most people just drive by and don't have a clue what's out here. So let's try right over in this corner. When you are flipping over logs and rocks, it's really important to get them back as close as possible to where they were. Well, here's another oh, major food item for the uh, worm snake, and that is this little redback salamander. And of course, they can survive in urban areas because they don't need water. So, worm snake food. those out of the way. Keep trying some more logs. Oh, <laughs> here is a, uh, here's a night crawler. And boy, are those close to the uh, size and diameter of a uh, worm snake. So we'll put this back and the worm back. So let's try another log here. Oh, and here we go. Here is, let me get it underneath this rotting leaf litter. Yeah, here is our worm snake trying to burrow underneath these rootlets. There it is. One of the great field marks of this animal is the super smooth skin and the pink belly that comes halfway up onto the side. The head is very wedge-shaped that uh, obviously used for burrowing and pushing their way underneath logs and rocks and other things. Very small eyes, a very small head. They're threatened species in most of New, most of New England, uh, or not even existent, so they don't even exist as far as we know in Maine, New Hampshire, or Vermont. Very uh, rare. In fact, the only place we know so far is this little area in Massachusetts. Wider spread in Connecticut and Rhode Island, and then they widespread beyond that. 
So in these little patches with thick leaf litter, good soil, with earthworms, redback salamanders, as long as there's little conservation uh, land around, they can persist. And it really shows the value of small conservation pieces of property. You don't always have to save 5,000 acres of rainforest. You don't always have to save 10,000 acres of salt marsh. Those are very important for sure, but small little patches can be just as important to small animals that don't move a great deal. So we're going to just uh, release our little female worm snake here right exactly where we found it. And uh, we'll just let it crawl back under where it is. The log is back in place.